time guys if I'm back again with another video and today we are going to be looking at the PCG matrix the Boston Consulting Group matrix it's basically a tool to analyze uh, different product uh, lines that you may have running simultaneously in your company okay so what is uh, the PCG the Boston Consulting Group matrix essentially what you do is uh, you take a graph and at the along the x-axis you have the market share and along the y-axis you have the market growth and you are basically dividing this into four quarters low market share low market growth low market share high market growth high market share low market growth and high market share and high market growth and within these uh, uh, four quarters that we have just made uh, products that are you know that have high market share high market growth those are classified as your star products uh, products which have a low market share in a high growth market that's your question mark products uh, products that have a large market share but a low market growth are your cash cows and products are low market share and low market growth those are your dogs and now, now let's uh, actually go in and uh, look at uh, the stars the the question mark the cash cow and the dogs in detail to try and understand what these mean and how would you uh, classify your products along these four lines and and you would use that to help you analyze uh, you know your various products that you have that are actually competing against each other for your resources or manpower for capital investment and what have you right so let's move forward uh, let's first look at the uh, star products now essentially the star products are basically those products that have a large market share okay and they also happen to be in a rapidly growing market okay now for example think back when the iPod uh, you know, came out at, at the early stages of the portable digital music devices. Okay, yes, the company had to invest a lot of money and a lot of resources to keep up uh, with the demands of this product. But because it was top of a market, okay, that was rapidly growing, that investment of resources should have paid off in sales uh, as sales continued to grow. Okay, so uh, just to recap, a star product would be a product that is in a market that is rapidly growing okay it's expanding at a, at a rapid rate and in spite of the fact that this market is rapidly growing your product happens to have a large market share a large chunk of that rapidly growing market okay and because of uh, the you know the the market is growing rapidly and you have a large market share chances are you would also be enjoying great returns on this product okay so that's essentially what a uh, star product would be or a star product line would be moving forward the next category that we have is the question mark okay now the, uh, the question mark uh, products or product lines are those products that are in a market that's rapidly growing but unfortunately, your product or product line has a low market share. Okay, it does not have as you know, this is half way uh, half of what the the, question, uh, the star was. It had a uh, rapidly growing market, but the other half that does not uh, match is uh, in the star you had large market share. In the question mark you have low market share. Okay, now these products uh, could go either way. Okay. Uh, it could end up uh, costing money or it could you know give you returns but essentially what it happens is it could go either way and because the market in which these products are competing is growing and you have a low market share uh, you have to invest you have to compete you have to have you know you have to compete against other products and what is uh, needed is if you need to make uh, make a go of, of a product line that's in a question mark uh, the way you position your product 
that is of utmost importance. And if you were able to position your product effectively, then uh, you could, uh, you know, uh, you could be successful. But uh, and there may be a lot of money to be made. But uh, once again, uh, position is positioning is key. Now, uh, there's a flip side to this also, that uh, since your product does not have a big market share, there's danger of pouring money into the product that ends up not panning out, okay? And you end up losing money. Uh, remember the iPod example we used in the Star uh, product line? Now, there were companies that were trying to compete against the I Apple iPod, and they were you know, investing a lot of money but they did not, the, the market was growing and they had a, a low market share. And in spite of the fact that they invested a lot of money, uh, their product didn't go anywhere. So that's the danger, that you could be uh, competing uh, you know, very, very strongly, but you still end up losing, okay? So that's the product line that would come in. The, those are the types of product lines or products that would uh, fall under the question mark category. Then we have uh, products uh, or product lines which are classified as your cash cows, okay? Now, cash cows are the product lines that uh, happen to be in a, uh, you know, they, they, they happen to be in a market share leadership role. Uh, the market is mature, okay? And so it does not take a lot of effort to support the product and but the growth rate, because the market is mature, the growth rate, uh, rate is low, okay? And, but uh, the flip side is, because the market is mature, there's less money required to, you know, to support the sales of these products. And because of the market leadership position that you have, the money that, can, that you're making can be uh, used to, you know, give a boost to other product lines, okay? So uh, cash cows uh, basically fund the growth to create future cash cows. Okay. Now, the fourth category would be the dogs. Now, finally, uh, dogs are basically the product lines that are, you know, basically not going anywhere. Okay. Uh, they have a small market share. They, uh, you know, the market that's small and it's not growing. Now. These are products or product lines that may not be consuming a lot of resources. Okay? They do not consume a lot of cash because the markets are not growing uh, quickly enough. And, but the other side is they are also not bringing in a lot of cash either. So basically unless these products are somehow uh, in some way supporting other, you know, uh, products which are in a better position, they should be discontinued. There's no point in having a product that uh, falls under this category, unless obviously there, there, there's, a, there's a specific reason why you want to do that. And uh, the resources that are being used here uh, could basically be used, uh, you know, to you know drive other products or other product lines. Okay, so those are the four categories in which we uh, divide up the. Uh, uh, the, your products or product lines, the, the stars, the question marks, the cash cows, and the dogs. Now, the BCG matrix may be a little misleading. Now, how, how does it mislead? Point number one, it does not uh, tell you anything about the profitability. Okay? So, uh, think about, it, uh, about a product that is a star product, it's in a, in a market that's rapidly growing, and you have a huge market sh uh, chunk of the market, but the amount of money and resources that you have to pour into this product, okay, to be able to uh, retain that market share in that rapidly uh, growing market, may be a lot more than, than maybe an alternate uh, product. So, uh, in so the profitability, the, the, the amount of effort it takes and uh, will be, may, may not make it worthwhile, okay? So you, uh, the BCG matrix uh, is misleading because it does not 
actually show you the, the bottom line. Okay, and maybe the, the uh, similarly uh, because of the resources that you have put in uh, and the, the the profit that's coming in, the margins they're so small that at the end there is you you're hardly making any money at all. So uh, in reality, uh, the PCG matrix could be a little misleading because uh, it's a product that's in a market that's rapidly growing. It's a product that has or enjoys a big chunk of the market, but it's not really a, a star performer because it's costing you too much money and it's not making you enough money. So those are the, uh, the pitfalls of the BCG matrix. This is where the BCG matrix, uh, BCG matrix actually um, misleads and fails. So you have to kind of be cognizant of that and you have to kind of keep that in mind that uh, the BCG matrix is a great tool uh, to analyze the products or product lines, excuse me, but you have to use other tools also along with it to make sure you are making the correct decision because like I said, the margins, the profitability of the products, BCG just does not, uh, matrix does not address those those points. So here, the BC, uh, BCG matrix does have some uh, shortcoming, but it's still a fantastic tool to analyze and evaluate uh, uh, your, you know, if you have uh, competing product lines or products that are competing for the, you know, for the resources of cash flow, you know, cash or manpower or you know, whatever. Uh, so this is a good tool, but you also have to keep in mind that it's not the uh, the end all be all. All right. So that's uh, basically in a nutshell what a BCG matrix does. I hope you uh, like this video. If you did, please kindly give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe. Thank you.